It's the face that's fascinated historians for generations. Tutankhamun, the boy king who reigned over ancient Egypt before his untimely death at the age of 19. Since his body was discovered at this tomb in the late 19th century, historians have speculated over how he died, theories ranging from accidents to murder. Now though, after supervising a new study that involved CT scans and DNA testing, Egypt's larger-than-life antiquities chief says he has the answer. Researchers also examined ten other royal mummies and found that Tutankhamun's father was almost certainly the renowned king Akhenaten. Previous theories that Nefertiti was his mother were also ruled out. Those who carried out the study say it offers the strongest evidence to date on the boy king's origins. When you look at what's published on the subject today, everyone has a different opinion because until now we've not found scientific proof. But we've used both CAT scans and DNA testing to provide final conclusions for the first time. Experts in the narrow field of Egyptology are still digesting the findings, but some have already hailed them as significant. They're trying to collect the samples for DNA testing, and ancient DNA is really difficult to get because it's ruined, so there's um, issues of contamination, so if someone's particle of someone's skill and skin fell into a sample, a bit of hair, um, eyelash, anything, it could contaminate the sample that they're testing. In that case, you might get um, our cameraman's DNA instead of the mummy, so we've got to be careful. Carefully, carefully, there you are. This is the best preserved mummy I've seen, because also because um, there's some beautifully preserved mummies that then have been damaged by tomb robbers, like the elder lady. She's beautiful, but all this part is gone because tomb robbers have damaged her. Whereas these mummies were in a tomb that was intact, and so they were never disturbed, and they're in amazing condition. bashing African people, but we are trying to be as factual as we can be. If they were in fact the originators of the scintillating empire and civilization of the Nile, how come in Africa they never have then duplicated it and built another civilization or even a quarter of it or a third of it to show that Africans could have built a civilization you know, comparable to the Nile? If that hasn't happened, how dare the Smithsonian and other groups come and tell us that it was people out there that made it? It's a completely hideous travesty of the truth, but they will literally pull out any, you know, chimera to hand you because right. they'll do anything to cover up the connections between the East and the West and the true story of these migrations and, the, and what the old Irish annals that I read uh, mention. They will do anything that, to have you go and read them. Our history as we are taught it, as it is brought down uh, generation through generation here in the West is... It's, I guess it's still being tweaked and, and corrupted, uh, you know, every 20, 30 years, or even more often than that. A sentence here, an in, inflection there, in the printed text, so to speak, and you've got a different view. I mean, that, that you're, it must be amazing to go back and do what you do to find out what really happened. It must be also very that discouraging at times. We explore the whole question of Egypt and the whole question of the movement of the races and uh, how did that pyramid get there, you know, how did, how did the civilization, how did it actually get started and who, who was the people who started it and then we have all of the other lie mechanisms, of course, which you have to negotiate and plow through. There's a whole cult since the 1970s funded by the United Nations of the Afrocentrists who uh, tried to uh, convince the world and have done a pretty good job doing that. Uh -huh. of that, uh, you know, it was the Africans who um, created the Nile civilizations. And there's 
not that there's no real hard evidence for that, but yet that was picked up by the media and by the Smithsonian and the National Geographic and all of these other orgs, which are highly suspect. Yeah. And they push this for all they're worth, and it doesn't. It's not sustainable. But Correct. at the same time, you're stuck with having to then rebut it. And these latest discoveries do rebut it. Uh, the even the uh, discoveries of Sigmund Freud at the turn of the century rebutted it. But you know they don't care. They don't. The establishment doesn't care what facts are. They they're going to hit you with whatever media spin that turns the whole of reality upside down. And and uh, my job then starts to in the 90s start focusing on the, this level of disinformation and through deconstructing the disinformation that plowing through the welter of lies that have been disseminated about Egypt, about Ireland, about the age of catastrophe and about so many other things in, in this life. What we commonly know and understand about Giza and Egypt and Egyptian civilization is, I hate to use the term, but it's essentially a lie. Uh, yeah. What what other word would you use? It's just it's a lie, and there are people promulgating this lie who know damn well that it's not true. But they've got money, they've got ego invested. Uh, you know, it's a big tourism industry, and we don't want to slight uh, the, the the black races of Africa. But unfortunately, the DNA is not to be argued with. He's not of African heritage. Uh, it, it's clear he's of European ancestry, and it's clear that this man is is, uh, is is Northern European. Most people would think, well, we'll see another Barack Obama or something like that. No, and uh, Obama trying to claim ancient Egyptian heritage uh, uh, amuses me to no end. Uh, that what I forget which pharaoh he claims to look exactly like, but. Uh, <laughs> It all gets to be out of hand. Yeah, he was uh, claiming to look like uh, Amenhotep the Fourth, who then known right. as Akhenaten. That's uh, considered Akhenaten. to be, yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, Tutankhamun's father. So uh, you know that could change, but the consensus is that uh, Akhenaten was Tutankhamun's father, and Nefertiti was the mother of Tutankhamun. There's mm -hmm. other scholars, of course, have different takes on this, but that is the general idea until. New evidence comes forth to change that, and, my, and Nefertiti is a very important character because she has been the one, in fact, of that particular dynasty, that particular family, that many scholars through the hundreds of years have suspected was of Western ancestry. So, uh, to find out now through the the most you know up to date science, DNA science, that in fact her son is directly, non negotiably of Western ancestry right. is a huge uh, vindication. The gods Ra, the god Osiris, uh -huh. uh, the god Horus, all are later descendants of Nordic and British or Irish, if you're using the pure sense. I don't just mean Ireland when I say Ireland. I mean the Druids, the Arya, the sure. high Arya who had colleges throughout the world. Well, those colleges, as the Irish annals and the ancient legends of Ireland confirm mm -hmm. were all over the world right down into Egypt but the legends have always been taken for legends and the myths mm. have always been taken for myths why because those are talismanic words you you put the word legend on something and people dismiss it this is much more in deep than just finding cocaine in, in, the, in, in the tombs of the mummies or pictures of elephants in South America and parrot feathers in Egypt and all of this other stuff that's come up anecdotally over the years this mm -hmm. is absolute vindication for those people who said no it's not just that these people visited or being thrown out like you asked earlier moved westward in a vain attempt to find a new home no this shows that their origin originally not visitation but their ancestry came from the west in a mm -hmm. direct west to east uh, movement mm -hmm. that is blows the whole thing wide open and I'm mm -hmm. glad you put the pictures up mm -hmm. because uh, remember Zahi Hawass adamantly refused to release this information when it came out. It's not official. This was leaked by people on the team mm -hmm. and from behind the scenes silently. Mm -hmm. the, the head men adamantly said, "We are." They are it's in the report. I have it. It says, I will not release it. 
They were so frightened of what this means for the Afrocentrists and all of the other bogus stuff that's come out from the universities and what the people will realize when they find that this right, is right, no merit right. in it. So there's that's a complete a... clamp down. Yeah, Those I got it. The that you're putting up in the article is completely leaked. Wow. What does that tell you? Yeah, it tells me tons.